Pastor, for today's man of revelations, each religion and denomination subscribes to a different interpretation of what salvation is all about. Here in the Kingdom Nation, we have the complete picture since this was revealed and fulfilled in the life of the appointed son. Pastor, can you once more share to us how this story has unfolded and what is the end point of the Father's salvation plan? Very nice topic to discuss, uh, Sister Kay, for tonight's uh, Man of Revelation. We have uh, articulated all of this uh, Man of Revelation in our Tagalog uh, version of uh, Power Line. And then uh, every Friday is our Tagalog version or Filipino version of uh, Give Us This Day. Tonight, we will cater to all of our international audience who, by the way, uh, won't be able to understand our dialect. So this is a global audience of sons and daughters where the international language uh, is the means for them to understand exactly the uh, message of the appointed son. So in uh, the church age of denomination and religion, as we have said, uh, they have not really uh, gotten the picture of from the beginning to the end of why we need salvation. In the Jewish age, uh, when the first uh, people were chosen through Abraham, they were not able to grasp the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the ways and means of the Father to let them come back to him and become the chosen people to uh, be the light of the world, the salt of the earth, by coming back to him in a way where everything uh, will be delivered to them once again that we have lost from the beginning uh, in the Garden of Eden where we all came from physically in the time of Adam and Eve when they lost the sonship and the kingship. And uh, then man's uh, relationship with God was broken and it must come back uh, through the ways and means that God will provide for man. And that is uh, the gist of uh, the story of uh, why we have to be saved. Salvation means coming back to him and he, our creator, once again becomes our uh, focus of uh, our attention, uh, focus of our being by the commandments, spiritual words of commandments that he will deliver to us, which will form our relationship between him and us as his children who are not really physical only, but spiritual, and we've lost that. So in this, uh, uh, in this uh, storyline of salvation, which I have... Uh, already uh, uh, delivered so so many, many, many times. In this 35th year of the uh, salvation of the kingdom's uh, uh, existence, the 35th uh, anniversary of the kingdom's existence on earth, I have uh, already delivered this so many times from the beginning to the end. It's like watching a movie. From the beginning, there should be an, an, an ending. So in, in every movie, at the end, you see the end. You see that word, the end. Now, when uh, we all came from the church age, uh, which uh, acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Savior, they receive his words, uh, still there is something lacking in them that uh, did not really complete it in our mind or in our spirit, the picture of what the Father wanted us to have, to be able to put together all the missing links of uh, understanding uh, in our mind, the storyline of salvation, where we came from, where we are now, and where we are going, and are we there already? This is the question. These are the questions that must be answered. So first of all, I would like to uh, remind you uh, that this is a repetition or a review of the storyline of salvation from the beginning to the end for the sake of those who are in the kingdom uh, who just came in and signed the covenant or in the agreement that from now on the fathers will be done. I mean those who are newly baptized and those who are uh, 
outside of the kingdom that they are supporters and they are, uh, they are televiewers and they love the ministry of the appointed son and uh, they had not yet decided to, uh, to come in and they are just, just uh, outsiders looking from the outside uh, what the kingdom ministry is. They appreciate it, they love it and they are even supporting it with their tithes and offering. And uh, this is all for their sakes because one day the Father uh, will reach out to them and uh, when the time is ripe and when the time is right, they will all be chosen also and be called because in the first place they are now televiewers, listening, uh, taking in every word I say and the doctrines and the uh, teachings that uh, they have come to uh, understand like us. So this is all for them. But for those televiewers who, are, uh, uh, who do not subscribe to this ministry but are nevertheless televiewers and they are still, uh, uh, and, uh, they are still be very, uh, very hard-hearted in receiving the message of the Son, but they are televiewers only looking for something to, uh, to criticize, only looking for something to accuse or persecute. These messages are also for you, whether you understand them or not, because you are so human beings like us. In the last days, we will face each other, and if you did not receive the words or the message of the appointed son right now, which are really the message of the begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who now in the Gentile setting is our Almighty Father, because we are born of His Spirit, we are born of the words that came out from Him, because uh, we obey them when we enter into the covenant, in the agreement that this will be done, then uh, you don't have any, anyone to blame in the judgment day but yourself. So let's uh, look at the kingdom vocabulary of the meaning of the following. One is sin. What is really sin? Uh, and many of those who uh, interpreted this in the church age, the sin is, uh, they describe the fruit of sin like adultery, fornication, stealing, uh, something like that. But that is not really the definition of sin. Sin is doing your own will, which always, which is always contrary to the Father's will. This is the serpent seed, that we call it. Because when uh, the devil taught Adam to sin against God, it is to disobey God. Did God say you'll die? No, you will not die. So he uh, opposed uh, what God said. And uh, by the token, uh, they disobeyed God because they follow their own will, because they have a choice also to follow or not to follow. So that is sin. Sin is disobedience against the will of the Father. What is uh, salvation? Salvation is the total coming back of man to the Father through repentance. Oh. The total coming back of man to the Father through repentance. What is repentance? Repentance is the process of surrendering our serpent seed or our human will and accepting the righteous seed of obedience to the Father's will. That's why we said in repentance, from now on, not my will, but your will, Father, be done. And when you have completed the process of uh, salvation in your life from uh, infancy to maturity of uh, spiritual growth, of uh, knowing the perfect will of the Almighty Father to understanding, knowledge, and the wisdom that will be given to you, then you will reach to the third level of spiritual growth. From a child, you are uh, treated uh, not according to, according to uh, Galatians chapter 4, even if you are the heir, as long as you're a child, you differ nothing from a servant. So you are under tutors and governors until you reach the third level of spiritual growth where you will know all of this, and then you will be declared as sons and daughters. That is when uh, you've known all of it, you uh, use your freedom of choice to accept all of it, stand your ground on it, and you've been tried and tested through the fire, you go through it, you overcome it, 
then you'll be declared not as a child anymore, but as a son. A child is born, a son is given. Isaiah 9, 6. Son or daughter of the Almighty Father. There is no more backsliding in that state. There is no more turning back. Because you know everything, you have accepted everything, and you are standing on solid ground of the belief that you have because you now have the spirit of the Father Almighty where there is no shadow of turning. Then you are declared as a son. Son is the body where the spirit of the Father dwells. When that happens, now the Father can dwell in you. You become the temple of the Father where there is no shadow of turning you will be one with him. So the Father's original purpose from the very beginning is to make man his dwelling place. That is the very purpose of God. So he made Adam. He made Adam, and Adam was the first created son. Created by God with his own hands and made a living soul, according to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the mission of Adam as, uh, as the first created son uh, he was now given the sonship and the dominion over all of the father's creation, the first son and the first king, as he was given dominion uh, according to uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, command of the father in Genesis. He was given dominion of all the creation of the almighty father. When you're given dominion, you're a king. He was created by God, so therefore he came from God so he was the first uh, created son and king. And then uh, Adam uh, should have become a complete being when the spirit of God was placed in him through uh, the command or, or the words of our Almighty Father uh, that was implanted within him. That is what we call the righteous seed. That's why he was given a command already, voice from God, word of God, that should have been uh, embedded with him because he has to obey them. But Adam was given the freedom of choice. This is the image of God in man according to Genesis 1, 26 to 27. And then through that freedom of choice, the devil knows that uh, he was not yet completely matured in receiving all of the commands of God. It was just the first command. So he was in his infancy of his spiritual life. He was tempted and tried by Satan, Lucifer, the devil. In his infancy, therefore, he disobeyed, and then he lost the sonship and the kingship by deception, according to Genesis chapter 3, uh, verses 1 to 7. Because of sin or disobedience, Adam cannot hear from the father anymore. He was uh, sent out of the garden. There, as, there is no more relationship. There is no more uh, fellowship and communion with God. Therefore, he cannot hear God's voice anymore. In fact, that is what we call the spiritual death. You are physically alive, but you are spiritually dead because you don't hear from God anymore. So, uh, uh, he became a God to himself. Now he interprets good or evil according to himself. He does not interpret good and evil according to God anymore because he lost that relationship. He lost that communion. And now Adam and his progeny became infected with the serpent seed, thereby needing salvation. Romans 5.19. So Adam propagated, and now we come to the modern age. Seven, more than seven billion people, each an individual has a soul. But are infected with the serpent seed of doing their own will. And uh, the storyline of salvation had been lost, even though there are religion and denomination in the world today, uh, projecting that uh, they know God because they are holders of the Bible, they have rituals, they have, uh, they have uh, uh, an image, or they have... Uh, uh, a form of holiness or a form of religiosity, but not really spiritual because they lack obedience to the Father's will. So they have not totally come back to the Father's will and there is no salvation there yet, although they came so close to the kingdom. 
to the effect that I can, I can uh, describe it as like if the kingdom has a uh, wall around it, they were even able to touch the wall of the kingdom. That is how close they were. But looking at the kingdom and touching it does not mean you are saved. You have to enter into the kingdom to be saved. And you cannot enter therein if you lack obedience. So obedience to the will of the Father by repentance is the key to that salvation. And people cannot receive that right now because they are still blinded by the false dogma, the false religion, and false teachings. Now, the Father called first Abraham because he did not leave us alone. He wanted us to come back to him. So he dealt with man again. He, uh, he uh, initiated the contact with man again by calling of Abraham in the Jewish age. So from the calling of Abraham in 2001 BC to the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD, man was given in that period of time a time to really follow God and accept uh, the will of God in his life. Abraham followed God, you know, but it was just the beginning of the father leading man to the thread of salvation up to the point where he will be able to receive the spiritual component of that, which is the spiritual words of God uh, dwelling in man again and uh, returning him from the first position where he had in the beginning in the Garden of Eden, completing the plan of God for man to dwell here where he can become the manifestation of the dwelling place of God. So for 2,070 years, the father dealt with the Jewish age. To make the story short, he was not able to do it. Or the Jewish, uh, in the Jewish age, the chosen people were not able to grasp and were not able to do the last, which is the com spiritual component of that salvation. So uh, he, 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 he gave them uh, the perfect example of becoming uh, sons and daughters of God again by sending his word. He himself came down through his word and the word was made flesh. In the beginning was the word, the word was, the word was with God and the word was God. And the word which is God was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And he was the perfect model of reconciliation, restoration, because on the mother's side, he's a human being. On the father's side, he is God himself because he came from God as the word of God. A little bit subservient to God, but that is God himself. Me and my word are the same. It is only that I send my word. It is my word that comes out to you. I send my word to you. That is who I am, that is my life, that is my spirit, that is my brain, that is my everything. My word is me. So in that vein, God came down through his words, made flesh so he can relate to us in his humanity. So we see him as the perfect mediator between God and man, and he understands our feelings, understands our humanity, and also he understands on the other side the God that we cannot touch, the God that we cannot see, the God that is immovable, the God that is immutable. But he bridged the gap between us and that God whom uh, uh, we call our creator so we could go back to him. So he lived that life. He has a body, he has, he has his humanity, but he's a spiritual being. And the father wanted uh, that to become the model. So the Father dealt with humanity once more to implant the spiritual component in man. And Jesus Christ is the spiritual component that must be had in man. And he showed us that we can do it because he became a human being like us. So Abraham was called to become the father of all nations uh, in the Jewish age. Collectively, the nation of Israel was called a son, God's chosen nation in Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. But as I said to all of you, the Jews were a stiff-necked neck, and disobedient nation. Exodus 32, verse 10 to 14. Uh, and the Jewish nation rejected the Father's rule over them in 1 Samuel chapter 8, 4 to 9. 
And then he has given us the begotten son, the word that was made blessed, the perfect model of salvation. The mission of the begotten son is redemption, to take back what we have lost, the sonship and the kingship, to give it back to the rightful heir, the fallen Adamic race. This is to take back uh, what Adam lost in the Garden of Eden, sonship and the kingship, in Luke 4, 5 to 7. Look, look at the, uh, the uh, temptation there. The third temptation was the, the biggest, the largest, and the uh, most powerful. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world, composed of men, because it is humans who create cities. Uh, in the time of Abraham, they were already having cities. They were creating cities. They were building and doing everything. And they were increasing in knowledge. So Satan, Lucifer, the devil, took Jesus Christ on top of a mountain and he showed all the kingdoms of this world. You see, all of this, the power and the glory of this is all mine because they were delivered to me. And I can give them to whomsoever I will. I can give them to you. There's only one condition. If you will bow down and worship me. And Jesus Christ rebuked him. He knew that Jesus Christ came to take back the sonship and the kingship that the devil is bragging about when he tempted him. The, all these are delivered to me. They're all mine. I can give them to whomsoever I will. That's why the world is in the hands of Satan, Lucifer, the devil. The world and its kingdoms are in his hands. Without them knowing it, they are the father. He is the father of them all. And they don't know it. And they, they were only lullabied by religion and denomination, believing they are saved. In fact, they are not because they have a form of religiosity on the outside. They have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The power there is obedience. They don't know that. They are in the hands of the enemy. They don't know that. That's why leaders of denomination and religion sometimes hate me with a passion because I'm telling them the truth. And this is the truth. You can, uh, you can now, you know, uh, put together the picture in your mind of the storyline of salvation, where this storyline is going. Uh, and it is very clear in understanding that when you understand this, then there will be no more question in your mind about how, why we have to be saved, where we came from, where are we now, where are we going, and are we there now, you know. And you listen to me. And you'll be able to put this together like a jigsaw puzzle that when you see it, it's all blank. And when you see the pieces, they are so hard to put together, it confuses your mind. And sometimes they just formulate their own ideas. Like in Romans chapter 10, they did not submit to the righteousness of God. And in uh, struggling to, uh, to, uh, to uh, establish their own righteousness, they failed to submit to the righteousness of God. So that this is what happened. They did not know that the begotten Son, Jesus Christ, is the Word of God made flesh, is God Himself. So the mission of the begotten Son is to take back what we have lost, which is the kingship and the sonship. And He rebuked Satan, did not fall to his trap like our first parent Adam. And when He was offered on the cross, and he said, it is finished. What was finished was the taking back of the sonship and the kingship to be given to the rightful heir, one amongst us from the fallen Adamic race. So why, uh, people would say, why does he need to be uh, crucified? Because that is what the covenant says. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. In Hebrews 9.22. It was accomplished on the cross in John 1930 when he said, it is finished. He paid the price of taking back the sonship and kingship. Now, Satan, Lucifer, the devil, is the loser. But he's a deceiver, and the people don't know it. But when he called me, put me back, put me into mountains, isolated me into mountains in six years, he revealed all of these things to me. Now I am revealing all of these things to all of you because I was sent to all of you to find out the sons and daughters who are there out in the world. They don't know me, I don't know them, but when they hear my voice, they will follow it because they will understand that this voice is coming from the Father Almighty. And they will follow it. That's why 
the kingdom congregations and the kingdom community of sons and daughters is getting bigger and bigger every day. No one can stop that. So he accomplished that on the cross. And then he saw his seed, the heir, in Isaiah 53, verse 10. The seed, the heir of Jesus Christ, is the one that will be given the privilege and the opportunity to receive the sonship and the kingship, although he has to be tried again. As our first parent, Adam, so he has to be put in the place of uh, Adam, first parent, Adam, uh, who lost the garden in the Middle East, and now uh, it must uh, resume somewhere else where that body that will be given the opportunity to receive it must also undergo the same trial and, uh, and temptation that our first parent, Adam, uh, had undergone when he was the sheep. And I'm so glad to tell you that I was the one chosen for that. So he put me in another garden, which we call the Covenant Mountain uh, Paradise Garden of Eden Restored. I was there for five years. For five years, I, was, I took the place of my first parent, Adam. I also started in infancy. Uh, the only command I receive is, I will follow his words. I will follow him. He said, I will use you. So uh, I knew that he was the one who called me. He placed me in that mountain. What happened to Adam in the garden also happened to me. I was tempted and tried and put under the fire, positive and negative. All of this fused together. I undergone that and I was able to overcome. Until maturity, until I understood everything from infancy to becoming son accountable, knowing everything, and accepting all of them, nothing fell into the ground, and then son placement. When I heard after five years, he said, now you are my son. So his mission of, uh, of uh, delivering the sonship and the kingship to the polynomic race, beginning with me, has now been completed. And uh, the son, appointed son, uh, the appointed son's ministry is to receive, to be the heir of the sonship and the kingship because it's, it is rightfully ours. Because we came from the first, physically we came from the first Adam who lost it. Now it was taken back by the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior also, and he gave it back to us. Oh, once there is one from the fallen and dynamic race that will be able to do it by the obedience of one. Many will be made righteous. That will be the beginning of the door of salvation. That's why the son can all, can, is the one that can only say, I am the, uh, I am the door. I am the, uh, the life. The son is the life, the truth. Uh, can you read that for us? Yes, Pastor. In John chapter 14. Starting verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No so, man cometh unto the Father. It is only the Son that can say that. It is the only Son this is the only son that can say that. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man goes to the Father but by me. It's only the Son. So I inherited all of these words of the Almighty Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, right now, the Son is the dwelling place, the temple of the Father where he can speak to all of us. And you can relate to me because I'm just exactly like you from the fallen Adamic race. Mother, father, both human beings, both need salvation. And now it was all impacted in this uh, ministry where I have undergone all of this. I was able to overcome. Revelation 21, 7 became a reality. He that overcome it shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. This is what the church people cannot, cannot understand. They cannot get this. But then he saw his seed. Then, uh, after the Jewish age was not able to comprehend that, instead of receiving Jesus Christ as the perfect model, they rejected him. They even crucified him. Even until now, they did not receive him. So he went to the church age. 
This is both the Jews and the Gentiles. It does not matter what you are. He went to us, the Gentile, the non-Jewish. And in the church age, uh, from 70 AD to April 13, 2005, they were given 1,935 years before my coming. Before my coming. They were given 1,935 years to produce the finished product. The church age came very close. But there's a saying that says, uh, what, that, what is that saying that says, so near yet so far? <laughs> they came so near, but they came so far. The Jews who were supposed to be the Father's chosen nation were not able to produce the desired results. Uh, so the kingdom was taken away from them, Matthew 21, 43. In effect, the Father stopped dealing with them when it comes to salvation. He turned to the Gentiles, giving everyone an equal footing when it comes to salvation. Matthew 3, 8 to 10, Romans 9, 24 to 26. So the life of Jesus Christ will pass through different stages until it produce the end result, the Son. You see the parable of the growing seed in Mark 4, 26, 29, Romans 1, 17, and John 12, 24. If you put that together, this is the meaning of that. So now, the seed that he saw is the appointed son from the fallen Adamic race. But I have to undergo what uh, Adam has undergone using my freedom of choice to receive all of this. And I did. So as soon as the appointed son was produced, the Lord Jesus Christ ceased to be the begotten son. He now sits in the position of the almighty father. So the father's own choosing, his hand of appointment came to produce the appointed son. John chapter 15. Verse 16, son of God in the spirit, not son of God in the flesh, but son of God in the spirit. You who are saying, I'm born again, born again. When I ask you, how are you born again? Who are you born again from? You cannot answer me. Now I am the truly one born again in the spirit of obedience to the Father's will. This is one whose body is from the fallen Adamic race, but the spirit is born from the seed of the almighty Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, through obedience. John 1, 13, John 3, 5, and 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. So the process of sonship was by repentance. And afterwards, his spiritual birth. And then after that, growth and adoption. Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. The result of which is the new man where there is no enmity between the flesh and the spirit. And the spirit does not quarrel with the flesh. And the flesh now is obedient to the spirit. So the flesh... It's no big deal anymore. What is big deal here is the spirit, the words of God that are being obeyed. This is big deal here. But look at the world. Because it's dominated by the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. It's so big deal. You know, when you touch the flesh, it's a big deal. It erupts like an at atomic bomb. And they make scandal out of it, you know. And they make capital out of it to destroy everything in its path in the kingdom the flesh is rendered powerless. The flesh is now being used by the Father only to glorify Him, to give Him back the glory because He owns it all. He created our body. He created our flesh. He created our mind. He created our spirit. He created our soul. So it is all Him. Now, the flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that is important here. In John chapter 6, verse 63, this is what it says. Let us read uh, those uh, words in John yes. 6.63. Yes, Master. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they it are It is life. the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. It's not a big deal here. It works. Uh, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So, see that? They are, there's always an enmity. The flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. In the kingdom, the flesh surrendered to the spirit. Amen. And the spirit now is the most powerful. The spirit now, which is the word of God, is at the focus of our attention. That's why he said, and I will be his God. God means he is all powerful over us. We obey him with love in our hearts unconditionally. The flesh does not fight against the spirit anymore. 
Whatever the Spirit says, the flesh will obey. So the appointed son now is the fulfillment of the new covenant, the new agreement. Uh, by obeying the words of the Almighty Father and was proven to be loyal, committed, dedicated, no matter what. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. So the process of the sonship was by repentance and afterwards spiritual birth. Uh, and then uh, uh, the result, which is the new man, where there is no enmity between the flesh and the spirit. Ephesians chapter 2 14 to 16. Can you read that for us, please? Ephesians 2, 14 to 16. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. There's no more division. There's no more enmity. There's no more quarreling. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make himself of twain, one new man, so making peace. And the appointed son is the model for that. There's no more quarrel between me and the Spirit. What the Spirit tells me, I will obey. So there is no more uh, uh, argument about that. And this is what salvation is all about. Because it is the flesh that made a God out of us. Whatever the God in the Spirit says, the God who is our flesh, you know, fights and quarrels with it. But when you have repented and you have learned the storyline of salvation, all of this now is completed because we will break the wall of partition, the enmity, the quarrel will cease because the flesh will surrender to the will of the Spirit. And that is salvation now. So the heir, the recipient of the sonship and kingship, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, took from Satan, Lucifer, the devil, everything, and then given to the rightful heir. The works of salvation now is completed. The kingdom of God in heaven is now here on earth. Fulfilling Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It will be done in this place, first of all, as it is done in heaven. So there is no more quarrel. All of it is now in unity, and this is salvation when you become sons and daughters, only obedient to him. So on April 13, 2005, the kingdom nation was born. Romans 9:28, Isaiah 62, 60, verse 22, and John chapter 17, verse 4. From one seed to many, productions of sons and daughters, the father and son relationship was once again restored. The spiritual atmosphere is established when there are sons and daughters who obey his will. First, second Corinthians 6, 18, Isaiah 43, 5 to 7. The Father's dominion of righteousness will have no end. Daniel 2.44. This little kingdom that you see here that began very small will be the kingdom and the rule of the kingdom and the system of the kingdom and the governance of it spiritually will cover the face of the entire earth. It began in April 13, 2005. It will continue for 1,000 years. The reign of our Almighty Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, when the glorification will take place. It has already begun in April 13, 2005. When it will culminate, you will see that in the future. So the storyline of salvation has now been completed. From the fallen Adamic race to the restored Adamic race. Embodied in the appointed son. We see all of this happening in our... And this is the picture of salvation that God wants us to have. Forget about the old heavens of belief of your religion and denomination. It is just confusing you. These are all confusions. These are all babel of voices. These are all the righteousness. Uh, establishing their own righteousness. They did not submit to the righteousness of God. Now you have a complete picture of that. And I'm just reviewing it. On our 35th year anniversary of the existence of the kingdom, the trumpet is still sounding. And the Father is calling all of his children that will go through this process and all of those that will overcome will be given the crown of life, eternal life. Born again in the spirit that will inherit heaven, that will inherit eternal life so that there is no more fear of death in our lives. There is no more fear of anything that the devil throws in front of us. There's no more fear of hell and there's no more fear of anything. Because we know we are now fully secured, we have now fully understood, and we are now sons and daughters 
who will own everything what our Father has. And He has given it in our hands. And I thank the Father that for these uh, times that uh, uh, He has given us in the kingdom, He has chosen an appointed son coming from this place, coming from the fallen and dying race from this place. Did not choose anyone, but chose one that is from you. That is how humble our Father is, to choose someone from a third world country and a Filipino at that should make all Filipinos proud. If you will but understand what I'm saying. Now, those that are maligning me, bashing me, persecuting me, accusing me, are those that cannot accept this because if they accepted this, they will be saved. But their religion and denomination becomes irrelevant, just like what they did to Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. They are doing that to me right now. It does not matter because they cannot stop what the Father is going to do. All sons and daughters will come flying in the rapture, coming to the new Jerusalem, their spirits being born again, being changed. And then this body, which is mortal, will be swallowed by, by immortality. This corruption shall be swallowed by incorruption. And then the last enemy to be conquered is death. Then at the time we can say, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is your power? That is eternal life. May the Father bless all of you, brothers and sisters. I'll be back in a while to answer your questions, comments, and anything you want me to share with our global audience. After these few songs, may the Father bless us all. Amen.